One of the things that you don't realize, and well, nobody ever tells you, <laughs> is that when you're scripting or when you're automating a task, one thing you must do first is plan what you're about to do. Write out and design what you're about to do. Create a flow chart. Write pseudocode. You want to make sure that what you're about to do is really what you intend on doing. Before you start writing scripts in a rush, you want to make sure that you are actually about to write what you intend on writing and you're affecting the system that you want to affect. Sure, scripts can automate your tasks, automate your administrative tasks, but they can also wreak havoc on systems. Scripts can positively and negatively affect the, affect the way your systems work. For example, let's say that you want to move files around on a particular system because, um, you know, you're running out of disk space. Ah, you're running out of disk space. You want to move files from one volume to another volume. If you have a script do that without really planning it out, you may move files that are utilized by other systems or by other configuration files and they need to be in that location. If you move them, those other systems would fail to work. And if you did that on a mass scale for multiple servers, you would really prevent the application from working on multiple systems. So plan out what you're going to be doing. Make sure that your pseudocode and the system that you're about to build or the automated task that you're about to create, you have tested and tested and tested again. All right. Um, so you want to be sure, you know, when you're writing scripts, you want to be certain that you don't make mistakes because in scripts it's very easy to make mistakes. And by the way, in scripting and in coding in general, there are three kinds of errors. There are syntax errors, very easy to get because if you don't enter the script commands correctly, you're going to get a syntax error, which means the script will not run. The second kind of error is a runtime error, which means that during the time the script is running, there will be an error, like a directory that you're pointing the script to doesn't exist. That's the second kind of error. So there's a um, a syntax error and a runtime error. The third kind of error is a logic error. Logic error is the one that is very, very difficult to troubleshoot unless you know what's happening. It would be the reason, logic error would be a reason, for example, to give you an analogy, would be a reason that would allow you to take out more money from your bank than you have in your account. Yeah, this can really never happen. You know that, right? You can't take out $100 from your bank when you only have $50 available. But if the coder who's coding that had a logic error, you would be able to do something like that. In scripting terms, you are also able to have a logic error uh, whereby sending the script in the wrong location and having the script do uh, something different. Here's the thing that I want to clarify. Scripts will do exactly what you tell them to do. Nothing more, nothing less. There is no mystery. And I will tell you that I um, you know, tell everybody that unless your system or your script is 100% predictable, in other words, what the script is doing is 100% predictable, it doesn't work. It's not supposed to be a guessing game. Scripts are supposed to work and do exactly what you tell them to do. They're supposed to take the path and the um, and every single line of code is supposed to be executed as you designed. So if the script is doing something wrong, it's because you didn't write it the proper way, or you didn't code it right, you didn't design it right, uh, you forgot to include elements of the system that you wanted to include. So you really have to be careful about what you're doing. For example, the for loop or a while loop. If you have a loop inside of a script, it can actually if you're not paying attention, you can end up in what is called an endless loop. An endless loop simply is a structure that, it, that stays in a loop where you have, where you specified no way out of the loop, okay? which can make it seem as if the loop is, or the system is hung. Okay? You can also have a while loop. Uh, you can have a loop until, until a particular command is set to be true. You can break out of a loop or you can continue uh, a loop you can have case statements, which are very, very similar to if statements. 
where you're detecting or taking a look at patterns. You can have a select control structure, which is based on a corn shell in the past. It displays a menu. The user is able to select a menu, menu uh, an item from a menu that is stored in a variable, and then you run the command. There's a here document that allows you to redirect input uh, into the shell script from within the shell script itself. There are the two less than symbols in the first line that indicate the here document is supposed to follow. All right. Uh, so you're able to have input into the shell structure as well. Um, you can also, you can also uh, before you run, before a process can read uh, from a uh, from a write, uh, uh, before a process can read from a file or write to a file, it has to open that file, and you can choose to uh, open a file associated with a number. It's called the descriptor with each file. And each process has its own set of open files and its own set of descriptors. A typical Linux process starts with three open files. The standard input, the standard output, and the standard input is descriptor 0. Standard output is descriptor 1, and a standard error, which is file descriptor 2. And often those are the only files that the process needs. The born shell opens files utilizing the exec built-in command. Right. The first line will open the out file for the output and, and it holds it open associating with the descriptor. And the second will open the in file and it will hold the descriptor in that syntax as well. Okay. So in file, out file, and the uh, error content. So keep in mind, uh, born again shell also supports arrays. It supports variable names. It supports loops. It supports uh, control structures. Really a full-blown language that allows you to automate tasks. Write it down, plan it, write pseudocode, test it multiple times. I'm going to be showing you how Bash works. Let's get to it. <laughs>